Devi. I was talking about. I, I told him we weren't going to your workouts. <laughs> 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 Are bacon and the sausage have an S. So, number one, I'm a huge procrastinator. Most of you know that about me. Uh, but I have, we have some incredible moms and dads and uh, community members that were able to step up when I just had a wild idea. Uh, that kind of mixed from a few things, and I'll tell you the story of all of it later. Uh, but basically, anytime we're heading into the playoffs, I try to do a video. So you girls might remember you've seen a video, you've seen something. Uh, at this point in their career, they've heard enough of the chickens talking. And so I thought, who else could get these girls motivated? Uh, we've talked about the legacy that you leave. We've talked about uh, the history and the sisterhood that you're a part of as a Reigns Lady Cat uh, in the town of Emory. Um, and so we have a lineup that you will see uh, of some special guest speakers. A lot of these faces you know, some of these faces you may not. Uh, but we're going to have these ladies come up, and instead of doing a video motivation, we are live motivation. Um, the incredible Mr. Lance is here to capture this for us, and so you'll have it to look back on years to come. We can share it with everybody, uh, but we wanted to keep it tight-knit just between our uh, Lady Cat family. And so to start, we have Miss Martha Bruce Lyle, and we have Miss Loretta Sue Potts Christian <laughs> of the class of 1955. Do y'all want to come up? <laughs> Now you'll see these papers uh, come at your table. And this is just a few page from their yearbook that uh, I was able to make a copy of. Um, but these ladies are gonna tell a little bit of their story, uh, a little bit of who they are and their uh, legacy that they left as Emory Wildcats. Is that correct? Okay, right. <laughs> Come on, get up here with me. <laughs> well, I'm not much of a speaker, girls, but I'll tell you, basketball is so exciting, and you'll never forget the stories and what happened to you when you were playing basketball in high school. And the things that we get now, when we do get together, we can sure reminisce. But uh, it's so much different now than it was that long ago. It hadn't been that many years now. <laughs> it's been a long time. <laughs> There's small holes in my jacket over there. I don't know why. But of course, when we went to state, and it was Emory wasn't as big as it is now, even though it's not too big now. But everyone in this town, I'm telling you, came, and I hope they do y'all the same way. But this, the gym would be packed. Standing room old men. <laughs> and a lot of old men, and, and I'm telling you, they got excited. And uh, they even every now and then, there might be a fight of all the things. That's not good. <laughs> but we managed to, we, uh, our coach, we had a really wonderful, good coach, like I know y'all have. And he would match us with bigger towns like Duncanville and Seagerville and he got the biggest places that we could, I mean, you know, that had good teams so he could make us play against them. And so we ended up going to state. And one of, we were five points ahead. I remember it just like it was yesterday. Y'all will too. And uh, <clears throat> we were five points ahead. We were playing, uh, what is that town? Claude. 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 
Tom, Law of Texas. And we'd already won our first game at Austin. That's where we went, to Austin. And we were uh, five points in, and uh, one of our main players, we threw the ball really hard, like, and uh, the ball hit her on her finger and broke her finger. And it was getting on down close to the end, wasn't it? Pretty close. Oh, but anyway, <laughs> we all went, we just went to pieces, you know, and cried, and we were all crying. So if anything like that happens to you, remember, keep your cool. And, uh, but anyway, we got beat by five points by Claude, and they won state. They went state. But there's so many stories you can tell, like they take us out. Uh, I remember Rose Potts, who's the Rose Community Center's name from. She started that community center. She lived here in town, in one of the oldest houses. It's still there in good shape. <clears throat> she would take us some, we'd get to get out of school early, and y'all probably get privileges too. And uh, we'd go out there and she would fix, I can remember one thing she could fix for us because we had to have strength, you know. And she would fix raw eggs and milk. Do you remember and that? A milkshake. A milkshake. Yeah. All <laughs> eggs. <laughs> 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 and all of them have salmonella. And uh, vanilla. She put a little vanilla in there. And I guess she had a, either a blender or a mixer, I can't remember. But she'd mix it up real good. But we had to drink that. <laughs> and we'd do that for one to ball game. Anyway, we had so many fun experiences. And, uh, so you girls, <laughs> you hang in there and did you like your egg milkshake? I'm sorry. Did you like your egg milkshake? He had ice cream, and we didn't have ice cream. We at didn't all. have it. It wasn't ice cream. It was just ice cold milk. She did have that. Uh, we didn't have ice cream, yeah. but she didn't, get, uh, she didn't have ice cream. Did you like it? Did I like that milkshake? Yes, I thought it was good. <laughs> <laughs> I could have drank it. I could have had two or three of them from it. Let's see what happened. Oh, there's just so many things. I'll let Martha talk. <laughs> but, but we're all behind you. Well, and let me first of all congratulate you because every team doesn't go this far. So you certainly have something to be proud of. And the other thing that I want to say is I am so glad that you cut out those baseball passes that you used last year because they were intercepted every time. <laughs> so, so anyway, I can I can see I have enjoyed watching you play. And we started we moved back to this area in 01. And um, Meredith Chavez, whatever she is, Meredith Runyon was playing me. And anyway, I compare her a little bit to JC. And most of you girls I have not known, but I've known JC since she was a toddler. <laughs> so I have seen her develop, and she's a scrapper, and I'm really proud of her for doing that. Um, I left here and went to college, and uh, but anyway, when Loretta and I were seniors, uh, Saul Everett left after our junior year. He was our master coach. He was very strong on fundamentals, and uh, I came from a country school into Emory as a ninth grader, and Loretta came earlier because she was more of a city girl. But anyway. <laughs> Uh, and I don't think either of us played on what we call the A team uh, our freshman year, but we both were on it our sophomore year, and then in our junior year is when we went to stay. But anyway, uh, Saul Everett, I can just hear him now yelling, Bruce! <laughs> <laughs> and hot. Yeah, and Loretta always fouled out. <laughs> I did that. If you're in there hustling, yeah. you're going to get some fouls. I had to admit that I was the low scorer on our loss in Austin. Uh, I only scored three points. Brother Richard said three. I thought I'd score two. But anyway, you'll have good.
good days and bad days. And that was obviously one of my really bad days because we'd been in a tournament earlier that year somewhere down in the Piney Woods. I can't remember where it was. And I scored 52 Wait. points in that game. But anyway, I was a forward. Loretta was a guard. We played quite different to you. We played on a half court. So we had our forwards and the opposing guards on one end and the opposing forwards and our guards on the other end. And they would steal the ball, they would bring it to center court and pass it to the forwards. So it's quite different to what you play. In fact, I sit there and I, then I puff when I see you run up and down that <laughs> so many times during a basketball game. But anyway, uh, you never forget the, the camaraderie that you have as players because uh, as you can tell, Loren and I are still friends, and we've been friends since first grade, and that's been a long time ago. <laughs> been a few years. Uh, I want to read you a little bit of what I've written. My daughter uh, enticed me to do a book, and so I finished that. I got 52 questions over 52 weeks, and I wrote a story every day. But this one is, what are some of your special talents? I have limited talents. Art, music, dance, and creative writing have never been a major interest of mine. However, I have had other interests that may or may not, you may or may not consider as talents. As a student in high school, my interest was basketball. My high school was small, but basketball was big. The businessmen followed our team every week, and we were talented enough to entertain them loyally. They had a good time, I can tell you. This was the 50s, and girls' basketball was not six players. I mean, it was six players, and we played only on half the court. My ace was dribbling. I was the ball freezer in the fourth quarter when we were a few points ahead and had strong commitments as, as opponents. So my junior year was our successful year, and we won our district, our regional, and went to the state tournament. And the results were very disappointing. So we hope that you will not disappoint us if you make it to. Do y'all still go to Austin? San Antonio. Okay, but but you will have opportunities. And let me tell you, most of us girls who went that year had never spent a night in a hotel or a motel. Right. And um, anyway, we had very strict bed check, and one of our players was missing. We were next door to a drive-in theater. They found her out behind the uh, behind the motel watching the movie. The drive-in theater. So anyway, we had a good time, and we have fond memories. And uh, you will cherish the friendships that you've made. When I went to college, uh, at the time we graduated, there were only two colleges in Texas that had women's basketball. Wayland Baptist College and Texas County Junior College. When we were seniors, our coach took us, several of us, to Texas County Junior College. And they offered me a scholarship, but I didn't have a car until after I graduated from, from college. So, you know, times were quite different then. And uh, as a result of that, I declined that, and I went to East Texas, which was called East Texas State University, I think, at that point. But anyway, it was in commerce, and it was close enough that some people in Rains County had cars, so I would catch a ride home on the weekend or whenever I came home from there. But as a result of that, I played for the Baptist Student Union in, in college in our murals, and uh, we won every time. And the football boys and the college basketball boys would come to see us play because they wanted to see the girl who could do a jump shot, and that was me. But I played with girls that I had played against in high school, and I still have few friends from them. But I want to tell you one other thing. You will have cherished memories from this. And you, like me, will grow old. <laughs> so as a result of that, you need to walk with the Lord as you go through life so that you have a partner wherever you go, whatever you do, and wherever you are. Amen. So from that, uh, I wish you well. I know you have good leadership, and I have observed your plan. I know you have a heart for the basketball game. So I wish you well as you progress from here.
might have to add a little to that story that she told about the girl watching the movie. You know, and we didn't get to go to movies, of course, back then. And uh, we're not going to call it any names. <laughs> but anyway, we were also not allowed to eat any pie, anything sweet, you know. We had to just, no dessert. And they watched us, these room mothers. <clears throat> so that same girl, we went, got to go to a uh, cafeteria, which we had not. We just weren't used to getting to eat out, you know, and do things like that. So they had all this delicious looking food. The reason I remember, I never forget about a good meal or food. But anyway, she, the same girl, they had forbid us to get a piece of pie or anything. She got her a piece of pecan pie. And all the girls got so mad at her, but especially when we got beat, you know, it had to be. Coming home on the school bus, and we all went on the bus, and no, no one would sit with this. <laughs> she had to sit over there by herself. So listen to your coaches. Listen to your coaches. <laughs> From her lips, <laughs> you're here. Uh, I just want to point out, so they had mentioned uh, the young lady on the team that was with them, Miss Betty, who is no longer with us, but it was the one that broke her finger. And when you look at this packet right here, um, I found a picture in the yearbook. All the yearbooks through all the years are in the library. So um, when you go back and want to look back, it's your school library that keeps everything but you'll see a real beautiful young lady uh, through the car on this bottom left, and that's Miss Betty. And Great. I can tell you, there will not be one for the graduating class of 1955 because... I did notice that. There was a 1956 yeah, year book, but I couldn't find the 55. Uh, it was a lost year, and it's unfortunate, but we didn't have a good staff, and we didn't have good leadership at that time. So, so the yearbook committee matters. We have it, yes, we do have one. But it, uh, the, that's the only year in history that we don't have an annual. Well, I'm sorry, I didn't think that. Well, that okay, so I hope you enjoy their story and their perspective, and that's part of today is everybody brings a different perspective. <laughs> Next, we have class of 2006. <laughs> We're going to the opposite spectrum. And uh, Ms. Kaylee Hoover Jones. Her sister, uh, Kara, was planning on being here all the way up until this morning, and a meeting popped up that she just had to be there. So her heart is here. Uh, I know that she wanted to be here with you, but she's in the stands cheering for you uh, at your games. Uh, I'm sure talking to her sister. So here it is to you girls, Coach Jones. <laughs> So, so fun. Yeah, Kara said, she had me down to speak. That's why I'm not going. <laughs> she was like, I'm not at all about that. So um, she's really excited, and she did want me to send her congratulations to y'all because we're super pumped. So, um, again, I'm not gonna, I am not don't have as many fun stories as Miss Martha because I didn't go to state. But um, I did have a really fun high school basketball career. Um, and I will tell y'all, this is kind of the point that I want to make because um, – my person is in this room, too. She doesn't even know this, I don't think. But when I came back to school here, I was in fifth grade. I went to kindergarten here. My whole family's from here. Both my grandparents graduated from Emory High School. My mom and dad graduated from Raines High School. Um, I went to kindergarten here. We moved away, came back in fifth grade. Well, I had not played a team sport yet in fifth grade. Um, I played, well, I'll take that back. I had played one season of basketball when we lived in Arlington, and it was just whatever. But I was big. Like, I was probably like five in fifth grade. So like my mom was like, hey, you might be pretty good at basketball. So we moved back to Reigns and my mom doesn't teach here. She's teaching in Alba. Um, but there's a group of basketball girls at high school who are like, they're real good. One of them is in this room, Kristen. And so I got, I'm sorry, Kristen, I know you don't want me to do it, but I fell in love with the game of basketball and decided I wanted to be really good at basketball because I watched as many of Kristen's games as my mom would take me to. I remember vividly being at playoff games. And listen, y'all, we played for a crazy coach. And even he could not deter. I mean, I, I fell in love with how he coached, but I wanted to be like Kristen. And so that led me into, I was all about basketball. I tell this story all the time. Y'all know me as a volleyball coach, but I played college basketball. My mom had to ground me 
in the seventh grade until I changed my mind and decided to play volleyball. Because, <laughs> because Kristen, I have Coach Cates was our coach's name, and he I found out that he was going to be with off season during during volleyball season. I had never touched a volleyball. I knew my mom played volleyball. Um, it was very talented at it, and she wanted me to play, obviously, but I was like, I'm no, if Coach Hates is going to be there, that's where I'm going to be, because i got to get going. Like, I'm ready to play, like Kristen and Mallory and all these all these girls that I had watched, and I, I mean, I fell in love with the game watching them. So, she was like, well, you're playing volleyball, and I said, no, I'm not, and if y'all know my daughter, that was a little bit how my mom and I were together, but it was just a little... <laughs> And I said, no, I'm not. I'm going to be with Coach Cakes during athletics. He's there. Why would I not be with him? And she was like, you need to understand you're probably going to be good at volleyball, too. We just haven't ever played. So I was grounded for, like, three days, and then I finally <laughs> said, fine, I'll play. Um, so I want you all to know, and I have one. I have a little girl in my house that's like, Mom, can you believe what JC did? Mom, did you see what PK did? Or... This is a funny story about Shorty, but last she made such an impact on Journey. Well, such I say an impact. Journey was telling me this something that Shorty did at basketball camp last summer. And she was like, Mom, you know that girl at basketball camp? And I'm like, there's a bunch of girls up there. You're talking about Chanley. Like, who are you talking about? She's like, she was doing, I think you were doing half court shots or something. And I was like, Chanley? No, it's not Chanley. She could not think of her name. She could not think of it. Finally, she said, you know, Tiny. <laughs> One day, you'll stand in front of a podium like this and talk to another group of girls if you're still in the area, blessed to be. Um, and it's just, you're making an impact. When it feels like all it is is the game and all it is is the, the circumstance around it, it's so much bigger than that. And it makes me so proud because I know all of y'all. And it makes me, please go out there and go further than I ever did in the playoffs. We made it to the third round. Please make it past the third round. It would be an honor. I can't wait to be at that game. And I will celebrate as much as y'all will celebrate for y'all to do that. I love y'all, and I'm so proud of y'all, and I can't wait. And I saw Coach Deacon said this. I stole it from her, but it's so true. Don't think about the third round today. That's not what today is about. Today is about round one. When y'all step in that gym, it's you versus how. Yep. how. Thank you. <laughs> but it's you versus you, essentially. You guys dictate how that game goes. How? Who? How? It doesn't matter, right? <laughs> so you guys get up there and play your game, play the way you know how to play, and we've seen it 31 times this year. You're going to get it done. It, you're 0-0 oh oh when you step in the gym, and that's the only game that matters. Take it one step at a time. I'm so excited. We're really pumped. We've already been. We'll be there Monday. I'll be screaming loud. Thank y'all. Thank you. Okay, next up, we have the class of 2000, Miss April Prather Emmett and Kristen Young McNew. And you see these ladies at your games as well. Moral of the story, you truly don't know. I had no idea I was going to say that. I did not intend to let cry or anything like that. But also having little, like, Madden is very obsessed with high school athletes. You truly don't know that those little kids are constantly watching everything you do and everything you say. And even the slightest, like, hey, or rub on the head, like, no, you really don't know the impact you're making. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, I want to say congratulations, girls. Super proud of you. I know a lot of your parents, I've uh, grown up with a lot of you. JC have played ball since she was as big with my daughter. Um, I played high school basketball, enjoyed it. One thing that I would like to give to you is look at her and say thank you. You girls don't know how blessed you are to have a coach that's been with you this long. Doesn't happen very often, I can promise you that. But for you to get that is amazing feeling. Um, when I played high school basketball, a couple of things my coach used to say, Coach Tanner, he'd say, Prather, you are a bull in a china closet. Well, that's Jesse. 
other thing he would say is, Prather, you're the only one that I know that can fit a three-inch pipe in a one-inch hole. <laughs> That's short. <laughs> so, if you know and understand that, that's that's true. I love basketball. Um, you girls, I really look up to y'all. And I'm super proud of you. And I'm proud of how far you're going to go. Because you are. And you keep sticking together. One of the greatest memories, and y'all do this with Coach Jenkins, I can remember is traveling to Arkansas to a basketball tournament. Stayed in Arkansas. Explored Arkansas. Did we do very good up there? No. We didn't, but that's okay. Um, we enjoyed that time. We bonded, and that's the most important thing, and I see you girls bond, and that is such a blessing to have, is to be able to bond like that and carry that through your lifetime. So I'm going to say this. This might not be very, very appropriate, but I'm going to say it to you girls. Take them to the train station one at a time. <laughs> All right? I'm proud of you. Oh, you're going to tell them about this. <laughs> so, um, you know, when you go, we went to eat at so your fancy, fancy at some kind of sizzling steakhouse. Yeah, fancy steakhouse. I don't And they had. Remember there, Shane? You were there. Shane was there. JD, you were there, weren't you? Uh -huh. I was there as a guest that you were going to say. Did like y'all take from Waterburger? Because I know y'all do. Yeah. Don't lie. Yeah. <laughs> we all kind of take from Waterburger. We never did. run so much in my entire right. life. We're going to yell down. Right. Yeah, we might have <laughs> one talk with those numbers. <laughs> and then the coach came to my house and um, let my mother have it for about 30 minutes because how dare her know that one of us took a number and not, um, she didn't stop it. Don't take table numbers. Yeah, moral of the story, don't take numbers. <laughs> I just want to say um, that I am super proud of y'all, and I had the honor of getting to be a lot of your um, teacher in first grade. I got to spend a whole entire year with y'all. Others of you I've come to love from just Memphis growing up, like around y'all same age, and as much as I love you then, I love you now. And it truly fills my heart with joy to watch y'all out there. Like the hustle and grit and determination. And you don't see teams like y'all very often. You should be very, very proud of yourselves. And to have an awesome coach is even better. Just the piece that um, puts it all together. Um... Oh, this is my takeaway life lesson that I learned in high school. Um, so, I wanted to score as many points. I wanted to score as many points as my number, right? Well, we um, ran the Winthrop Tournament, playing Brownsboro, and I had quite a few points. Whatever, and we get to the end of the game, and I was like, oh, I, I almost... I almost had it, I almost had it. And that our coach just pulled me right out of the game in the fourth quarter, and I was like, no, like I've been trying for four years to get 42 points, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> pulls me out of the game, I'm like, but I'm 41. Can't I just, just why are you taking out? Please just let me stay. He said, sorry about your bad luck. I guess you should have made your free throws. No <laughs> <laughs> other story. Made your free throws. <laughs> Under my breath at that moment, not only the next few days, but it has stuck with me. It's the little things that matter. We're super proud of you. Go get them. All right. Okay, so next we have the class of 99, Chantil Ellison Wallace, and class of 97, JD Trailers Stair. I'm going to try not to get emotional, okay, because y'all know when I get up in my feels. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to get emotional. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll say something, and then I'll let her go, and then I'll... 
Um, probably one of the most unique things about high school sports are the relationships that you're going to make. So JD's two years older than me, not to call out numbers or anything, <laughs> but I... Yeah. yeah. So the cool thing with high school sports is you get the opportunity to make sisters with people that are not your age, right? So my freshman year, I got to play with Jamie, and she was the baller. Get the ball in her hands. If, you, if, it, if the game's tight and you got to have the winning shot, you get it in Jamie's hands. Then here come these little freshmen in, April and Kristen. April was a scrapper. Okay, I grew up with those two playing Little Dribblers basketball. My dad actually coached us. April Prather covered every square inch of that court. Okay, the ball, half the time I couldn't keep up with her because she's already gone. She's stolen the ball, going down for a layup. She was so incredibly fast. Kristen, she was the big girl on the big goal. Get it in her hands and she's going to put up 42 points, right? So what I'm saying is you have such a unique opportunity to create these relationships that one day you're going to be here raising your babies together, coaching each other's kids. It's such a cool opportunity. First of all, congratulations, guys. Super proud of you guys for everything you've accomplished. Um, you've turned back around the um, legacy of Brains Girls Basketball. So when I was in school, it wasn't a good legacy. Um, we had a lot of talent and we had no teamwork. Um, I had four different coaches through four years of high school, three of those on varsity, um, and it, it was a tough time. We, we should have been able to go far, but we didn't because um, we didn't have the teamwork. So what I would like to say is this is not about you or you or you or you. It's you as a collective group. You need to realize that you are here together to accomplish something um, as a team and under the leadership of your coaches. Again, reiterate what April said, you're very blessed to have a coach that pours into you like she does, that has stuck around for you and believes in you. Um, so every time you go on that court, it's not about how many shots can I make, how many steals can I get, how much playing time I get. It's, in, it's collectively as a team what you need to do to succeed. Everyone's going to have a good day. Everyone's going to have a bad day. And what Coach Deacon says should be the end of it. Same thing goes for the refs, the people you're playing against. They don't matter. Your teammates matter. What you can contribute to them, how you lift them up, encourage them, and make them better by being in your presence. That's the number one thing that matters, guys. Because this is so much bigger than basketball. The things you are learning and showing on that court, we're going to take you through for the rest of your lives. The determination, the grit, the positivity, the good attitude, supporting each other. There's going to be times it's hard. Things are going to be unfair. Guess what? Not going to be the first or the last time you see that in life. Things are going to be hard. You have to maintain your moral ground, your high standards, and do what you have been taught and learned to do. Got it. It's okay. <laughs> so I'm speaking to you from my mama's heart right now. Y'all know Alice and Grace. And she loves the sport of basketball, but she loves it because she admires so many of you. She's not little Lily, right? She's right behind you. She's on your heels. And y'all have done so much to inspire these young ladies. And I thank you. Beyond the sport of basketball, what she just said, how you hold your head up out there on the court, even if you're behind, your morals, your ethics speak volume to these young ladies, and I thank you for that. And that's your challenge when you go out there on that court. I don't care what the score is at the end of the day. I want you to stop and think about who's in the stands, who you're inspiring. But ultimately, God has given y'all talents. If y'all stop and think about this, we have 520 plus kids at high school. You are the elite. You are the elite basketball players in that school. And then stop and think about around the district. Seven schools say they all have about 500 kids. Out of 3,000 students, y'all are the elite. Y'all can go as far as you want to go, but it takes all of you 
to be on the same page. So thank you and good luck. So just echoing two little stories uh, from two ladies in here. Uh, one, we had our senior night. We also had our RYSA night at the same time. Uh, and that was a super special moment, kind of thought things come full circle uh, as, as a mom. See Kylie growing up and taking all the pictures that I do. See Lily Bell uh, growing up as well, playing basketball. Those girls talk about y'all nonstop. And on the RYSA night, they all like, can I take a picture with her? Can I take a picture with her? Can I go be that number? She's wearing the number that I'm wearing. And so that's huge. And with Allie, uh, those eighth graders that we get to work with, they talk about it nonstop. And they love what we were able to do with them on those Wednesdays. So that's super special. Great. Next, we have the class of 1994. This is Stacey Lewis Campbell. I was thought I was going to get through this without crying, Chantil. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. Jamie, what'd you say? I forgot the most important part. Do you ever want to know where Jesse got through? Hey, we don't have to go into this right now. <laughs> this isn't about me. <laughs> I did write down what I want to say because I don't want to forget anything. And... <laughs> I don't know if y'all have noticed that y'all kind of big thing and the same thing that Chantel said and the same thing that so many people have said I don't even think that y'all even understand how many people are watching y'all every second that y'all are on that court they're watching you when you're doing warm-ups they're watching y'all and y'all are picking each other up when you're down. I see people show up for these games that I've never even seen in the gym. I mean, I've been around for a long time. I see people that are following y'all up for East Texas to watch you girls. And I ain't trying to say nothing. I ain't trying to say nothing. Sure, you shut your mouth and don't tell nobody. But a lot of them leave after y'all's games. <laughs> they're coming to watch y'all. Okay, they are coming to watch y'all. They love watching y'all play. Y'all are a lot of fun. I see these little kids that are there, and normally a lot of them are playing. These girls sit down and watch y'all play. They sit down, and they be quiet, and they watch y'all, and they cheer for y'all, and they are watching what you're doing. So they're not quiet. <laughs> they're not. They're not. Yeah. They are cheering, and they are excited, and they are y'all's biggest fans. I'm so proud of every single one of y'all. I get asked about y'all all the time. I cannot leave my house and go anywhere that somebody does not ask me about this team. And they ask me why y'all are so good. They're like, do y'all just have like one player that's just fantastic? And I tell them the same thing every single time. And I say, no, we don't. We do not. I say, I always tell them that we don't have a bad player at all on our team. We don't even have bench warmers. When our starters come out of the game, there's a whole other set of starters that come in. I never have any doubts when there are sudden being made that the people that are out there, the, that your opponents, they be like, oh, thank goodness, those girls are going in. Mm -hmm. We got a whole other set of fresh legs coming out, and every single one of y'all deserve to be there. And every single one of y'all fight like you own it, and I am so proud of that. And that's something that's very unique to this team, um, and one of the things that make y'all so good, but it's not what makes y'all great. What makes you great is how much you guys love each other and the bond that you have. What makes you great is your love for the game and your never quit attitude. I've never seen a team that encourages, supports, and picks one another up the way that you guys do. And no matter what your win-loss record is, that's always going to be what makes you great. Anybody that comes to this game can look out there on that court at any point from warm-up to the end of the game and see how much you guys love each other. And I'm so proud of you for that. And the same as Chantel. It doesn't matter what that score is. I wasn't able to be there on Tuesday night. But I was being kept up to date, and I was trying to watch um, on the, the little webcam thing. Um, and there was a point where I thought, you know what, if we don't win this game, it's okay. There are so many more important things going on right now that even if we don't win this game, it's okay. And I know that's not a good, probably something that you think an attitude that winners would have, but I'm going to tell you girls, 
there's a lot more to this than not playing basketball. And I see a lot of growth in every single one of y'all. I see a lot of maturity in every single one of y'all. Compassion and love for one another. And that, was my, that is what makes me the proud of you all. But something else that also makes you guys great are those three coaches right there. They pour into you all every I will tell you that Coach Jenkins doesn't just coach you on Friday night. She catches those little tights on Saturday morning. <laughs> they pour every single ounce of everything they have into you. And I just want to take just a minute. Um, y'all don't get the recognition that you need. And I want you to know, Jenkins, that the second that you got here, I knew that you were the coach for JT. Because my girl is real big into watching film before we play anybody. She watches our opponents. She will sit down. Her and her brothers will sit down and come up with plays and things that they can do. And there's not many coaches that you can go up to and go, hey, Coach Jenkins, I've been watching plays, and I want to go over plays with you. And as a freshman, Coach Jenkins would sit down with JT, and she would listen to her. And I'm pretty sure they have run a couple of her plays and done a couple of the things on defense. And Coach Jenkins respects you guys, and she loves you guys, and it's very evident. And that is how you get so much respect and love from them and from us parents. So from the bottom of my heart, I thank you for being the coach that you are. I love my girl like you. And Coach Smith, I, I loved you the second that you called me and asked me what you could do to help your relationship with my daughter. Sometimes she has an attitude. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't care what Betty says, that don't come from me. She's up from her dad. <laughs> and her and Smith butt heads pretty hard there for a little bit. But Coach Smith loves his job, and he loves our girls so much that he literally contacted me, and he goes, what can I do about this? He didn't contact me and go, your girl is a brat. Can you do something with her? <laughs> he contacted me and he said, what can I do to fix it? And I love you for that. Coach Jim, I don't know as much about you. I don't have a fun story about you, but I see you out there every single game. And I see you loving on our girls, and I see you encouraging them and literally being the reach earlier. And one of my favorite photos from last week, I was showing it to JC. All three of y'all are in the same position, and I don't know if it was a good play or it was a bad play, but y'all are all going like this in the same, in the exact same position in different, in different spots. And um, There's no doubt on earth that you guys are 100% behind these girls and that y'all literally love them just almost as much as their moments do. And I see it, and I love it, and I thank y'all for that because I would never, I, if I had the chance, I would not go back and pick different coaches for my girls. I would not go back and pick different teammates for my girls' team here. I love y'all. I'm so proud of y'all. I want y'all to go out there and remain who you are. Don't forget who you are. Don't forget where you came from because just like Jenkins says, it is one game at a time. Um, and I want I love how she says stay hungry and that we're not full yet. Um, and I want you guys to remember that. And I, and I do. I think it's, it is very important for you guys to focus on the next game. But I'm just going to go ahead and tell y'all that I already have reservations for a room state. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we have the class of 92, Ms. Christy Douglas sits, and class of 91, Ms. Carrie Douglas sits. Our band, listen, Carrie Douglas, <laughs> Double Well, going last. It's a little hard because a lot of things are going to be reiterated and uh, retold. Good thing about a small town is you get to see things come in full circle. I'm sitting here looking at two of my kindergartners that I knew were <laughs> that I knew were full of good things to come, and I'm very proud of you both. Not only for the basketball players you are, but for the girls that you were on before. Um, a memory or something that I hold very dear is I got to play on the court with my sister. Honestly, her class was the talented class. They had a class of athletes. She just had the heart that we didn't have. <laughs> they had the talent. I did. I, I, I love basketball. Had I love basketball. And that's something that, you know, I see in a lot of you guys is you are a very talented group, but you also play with a lot of heart. And... Uh, 
I told you that. So, yes, they definitely come back into full circle. But one thing that y'all are blessed, I had a different coach four years. Our, our program was not success, successful. They did have a successful year. We did, but I still had a different coach every year. Yeah. But that's something that's very important. Y'all are blessed to have the stability that you have, and don't take it for granted. Play for each other. Um, everybody's going to have an off game. But as long as you know that there's somebody there that's picking up your slack, because nobody plays that on purpose. It's just one of those days. But as long as you play for each other, there's no one that can beat y'all. I really don't think. You have the talent. You have the heart. You have the coaching. It's all there. So I'm very proud of y'all. I wish y'all the best of luck. And keep making everyone proud on the court as well as off the court, because you guys are respected and looked up to by me. I think I was going to have to speak. I thought that was an option. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good at like behind the chair speaking, not in front of people. Um, but yes, you are looked up to by these little, say what you warm up. Just the other night, Cole was talking about how good somebody was just from their warm up. I mean, you think people don't watch during that time, but they do. You guys are blessed to have Coach Jenkins and the rest of the crew. You're very lucky. Um, teamwork, it's huge. I was a sophomore on the varsity. I got to, I got all tournament one year, or one tournament, and I played post half of that tournament because our coach got mad at our post. And I was, there was, they had this girl that had no business playing basketball, but she was this tall, and that's what, she, that's what they used her for. And the only thing I had was my big old baby. <laughs> walk around. That's, one, that's all I had going for me to get started. Hey, we talk about walking around. Yes, and I'm telling you, it's, it, um, it made a difference. But getting onto that bus after getting that all-tournament trophy, the first thing I did was thank my team. Because without my team, I, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have got to do all that. Teamwork is everything. Um, I know I'm going to forget a lot. You're going you're gonna to remember these memories forever. Like they, the, the memories in the yearbooks, it's going to bring back so much. And you're not going to forget it. your relationships. Just cherish it every minute. And Jazzy and JC, y'all get to play together, is something that y'all will remember forever. Because there's something about a sister's intuition or that sisterly bond that you'll forever cherish. You probably fight sometimes on the court. <laughs> I know we did. Like we're in practice. Yeah. Like yeah. Practice is really Carrie, awesome. Carrie was really good at that. When she would get like three feet from you and just pass the ball as hard as she could. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, why do you do that? <laughs> but she, she had so much heart. Yeah. And uh, I got to play. Stacy was a fr freshman when I was a senior. And I do know where JC gets her fierce competitiveness. Now, your mom was a freshman, so I didn't get to see the temper because she was a little shy. I was she scared because you were from Boston. <laughs> <laughs> I was a little scared. Did you say Carrie yes. was bossy? I was scared of Carrie. I just want to get that on record. <laughs> <laughs> She's the bossy sister. <laughs> well, I was scared of you back then. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but just remember... A lot of times you don't remember the scores of games. You, I, I don't remember what I, you know, points I scored, but I do remember walking off that court for the last time in Mount Vernon, knowing that I would never be back on the court with this group, or you know, friends that I still have today, you know. So just cherish every moment moment of it. And I got to play with Stacy the year we went to playoffs. We were by district camps. We should have been. The next round champs. <laughs> we uh, we didn't show up for that game, so just always go in and show up. We sh we should have we should have gone farther. We had the ability, but show up, show up for each other. Okay, so I hope you've gained some perspective today. Uh, I hope you have realized the story that's being told. We've been talking about uh, writing a book. Like this is chapter one, chapter two. Uh, we are currently in chapter four of our book, starting for the playoffs. 
and um, I wanted us to kickstart it in the right way. Uh, there are many perspectives put into a book. Uh, there are many things that I hope that was said today that maybe you just didn't think of. Uh, I hope you realize there's no redos, right? There's no, uh, I wish I could have done this or I should have done that. Uh, so enjoy the moment uh, and enjoy the memories that you are making with each other through the relationships you build. Um, and I think you said it perfectly. None of this can happen without the God-given talent that you have, without the focus in your heart, um, and staying true to who you are and knowing who you are as a young woman. And that's also what today's about. Uh, you are going to grow up into a young woman like these others. And uh, an old woman. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't say that. You can <laughs> Uh, but you will grow up, and uh, I just want your hearts to be full today. And so I asked Mr. Powell if he would give like a closing uh, to wrap up this morning, um, and then also pray over you, and then we will put those shoelaces on and get to practice. Congratulations again for all that you have accomplished so far. I mean, it's it's been awesome. I mean, 31 wins, that's a school record, 12-0, and 0, undefeated district champs, 200 <laughs> career wins, 1,000-point score back there. I'm confident if your former school would have released the records that, that, that you, we would probably be recognizing you as a 1,000-point score as well. Awesome accomplishments so far but yet so much more to accomplish. Um, basketball, girls basketball in particular, has changed so much. I would encourage you, look on YouTube and find old videos of three-on-three -three girls basketball. That's essentially what they were talking about. And I was watching you thinking, what are they talking about? <laughs> and probably up until the mid-1980s, there were some states that still played girls' basketball in that format. Um, girls' basketball has changed so much. I never saw my high school girls' team play, ever. Because back in the day, even though my high school was the same size as Reigns, schools didn't have ox gyms. And so the boys played away, the girls played at home. The girls played away, the boys played at home. I never saw a high school girls game for my high school while I was, a, while I was a, in, in school. I never went to a college girls basketball game because at that time it was so different than the game is today. But it's so fun to watch y'all play. I'm so proud of you. I want to offer just a spiritual component to this. And I'm going to say just up front. I, I cannot predict the future. I don't know the future. I'm not going to pretend to know the future. But I do want to tell you a story. August 27th, I think, it's the last Sunday in August here at Emory Baptist Church, we were having our annual Back in the Game Sunday. And that's just basically where we, we bring it into the summer and we say, okay, now church, it's, it's time to get back in the game with your attendance and with your ministry and with your spiritual disciplines and all those things. And I was repping the Reigns Lady Cats. I had on a shirt, Reigns Lady Cat shirt. Daniel Thompson had on the Reigns Lady Cat shirt. We, we encourage all of our church members to wear the shirts of their favorite teams. And so I'm talking about you girls, and I'm saying this can be a really special year for the Reigns Lady Cats because... They have this many returning starters and this many returning lettermen. And we played in the region quarterfinals last year. And, and this team has a chance to do uh, and go further than any other Reigns team. Well, at Emory Baptist Church, it's, it's not common for people who are sitting in the pew to talk back to the preacher <laughs> during the sermon. That may be common where you go to church, but that's not real common at Emory Baptist Church. And so when I made that statement, these two ladies right here said, well, they would have to go to state or something like that. 
I had no clue as to what they were talking about. I didn't have any idea that the Emory Wildcats in 1953 played in the state tournament. And so if you think about that, and so that that began the ball rolling when I said, Coach Jenkins, check this out. <laughs> 70 years ago, these ladies played in the state tournament. And the potential for this team. Now, I don't believe in karma. Karma is something that is unique to Hinduism, Buddhism. What I do believe, though, in is divine providence. And for us to be talking about, what, what were you girls doing in August? You were playing volleyball and running cross country. You weren't thinking about basketball. But yet, the thought of playing in the state tournament was on the hearts and minds of people already. But even more so, it seemed to be on the heart and the mind of an almighty God. And again, I'm not predicting the future. I'm not telling you what the future is going to be. However, I am grateful that the thought that came about in August is now trending again for the Reigns Lady Cats. Starts with how, but man, I will echo what Stacy said. We have our reservations and we have bought our tickets already. <laughs> and so we are excited for y'all. I do want to pray with, for you and over you. And um, I'm grateful for y'all, moms, dads, players, everybody. Father, we're grateful for this morning. Thank you for bringing everyone here who's had a part in the day. Father, I ask and pray um, for you to watch over these girls. I pray that you would strengthen uh, their immune systems and protect them and their coaches over the next several weeks from viruses and sicknesses and anything else that would slow them down. I pray that you protect them from injuries, Lord, and protect them from sprained ankles and tweaked backs and jammed fingers and all of those things. And if any of them right now are sick or they've got something that's nagging them physically, Lord, I pray for your hand of healing upon them. And Lord, I pray that you would just encourage them, encourage them uh, to play the game that they love with everything they have and all that they are uh, for the glory and honor of Jesus Christ. I pray that you would uh, bless their families, I pray, Father, that you bless the coaches. I pray that you bless these pray, uh, players. And, uh, Lord, we're, again, we're grateful and thankful for the opportunities that you have given us, and we don't ever want to take that for granted. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.